The World Health Organization, WHO, on Wednesday reported that COVID-19 cases in Africa as at May 20 has risen to over 90,000. WHO Regional Office for Africa in Brazzaville, Congo, gave the update. The office added that the continent has also registered more than 35,000 recoveries and 2,885 deaths. The figures showed that South Africa, Algeria and Nigeria has the highest reported cases in Africa. According to the report, South Africa has 17,200 cases and 312 deaths, followed by Algeria with 7,377 cases and 561 deaths. Nigeria has 6,401 confirmed cases and 192 deaths as at last count. It stated that Ghana has 6,096 reported cases and 31 deaths, while Cameroon recorded 3,529 confirmed cases and 140 deaths. Joining us live is Professor Kilian Songwe, Principal Consultant. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, uh, Felix. Good morning. Uh, Are you... Uh, a pleasure. Uh, are you surprised by these figures and... Are they what concerns, um, and what are the concerns rather they're raising for you? Uh, first and foremost, uh, I'm not surprised about those numbers. Uh, if you notice, as the pandemic, uh, when the pandemic became announced in March, and uh, different countries started to put a lockdown uh, on their countries, uh, you would notice that the lockdown in Africa actually, in essence, commenced. Uh, in the very last week of February. And I think Nigeria was one of the few that started off uh, earlier on. But uh, when you think about what happened between Nigeria and Lesotho, that was one of the last countries to have a lockdown, uh, the lockdowns actually were very different in their methodologies of implementation. So you had lockdowns that were basically curfews uh, from uh, dusk uh, to dawn. Uh, you had lockdowns that were within states or within counties or within regions. And so there was still a relatively high movement. Uh, for the case of Uganda, which uh, I know very particularly, we had a lockdown which was very militarized. Uh, it was a complete shutdown of the entire country. There was absolutely uh, no movement. Uh, there were no people found on the streets. It didn't matter whether it was uh, daytime or nighttime. And as a result, when you look at this across the continent, you could actually uh, see that uh, the level of the lockdown actually had kind of sort of a correlation uh, to the number of cases. And I'm talking lockdown. I'm looking at movement within the country, and I'm also looking at the uh, immigration, there's a case is coming from outside of the country, uh, which is uh, which was actually a big number of the cases for a lot of the countries. All right. These right. countries are getting uh, high cases, South Africa, Algeria, and Nigeria. Some are suggesting that isn't it time um, these countries should come together and consider a deliberate collaboration uh, between them to find um, a cure, to come up with a solution and a homegrown remedy uh, for the virus? I think that's, uh, that's uh, what everybody is thinking about uh, on the African continent. Uh, and indeed, uh, I think this is uh, just about the time uh, for the African continent to really think about uh, support for uh, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, support for research, uh, stronger budget lines for uh, research and the pharmaceutical industry. However, when you look at uh, the three countries, South Africa, Nigeria, and Algeria, uh, they actually are kind of sort of a different, uh, very extreme different corners of the continent. And uh, yes, uh, we could have regional collaborations, uh, which could certainly foster some very good uh, healthcare prevention mechanisms for the continent. But again, it's true, one of the things that really, really has to happen is I think uh, the ministries of health across all these countries, they really need to start thinking about a stronger uh, collaborative effort amongst themselves, uh, collectively uh, through the African Union, and specifically I'm thinking about Africa CDC at the moment, which has done some tremendous jobs putting out material to help the African continent uh, evade some of the uh, outfalls of the uh, pandemic. But uh, we need structures such as African CDCs, we need a structure such as uh, uh, ECOWAS and all the other structures to come together and put more money into our pharmaceuticals, get our ministers of health to strengthen research so that uh, right now one of the biggest problems with testing on the African continent is the uh, absence of commodities, the testing commodities to be able to test. 
But the reason why we have that is because we don't manufacture that on the continent. Should we be able to start manufacturing some of these tests on the continent, then you would find out that uh, we can cut some of these cases, regardless of what the pandemic is or the epidemic. We can cut some of these earlier, we can reduce the number of infections, and then we can ensure a better health for our people. Okay, considering the role that the WHO plays globally, what concerns you about the seeming falling out between it and countries like Burundi and Madagascar when it comes to the issue of um, their remedies? Uh, WHO, yes, it plays an extremely pivotal part on uh, public health and uh, actually surveillance and uh, trying to pick up what is going on in different parts of the world. And it, I think it's sad, uh, I think it's a rather unfortunate situation for Burundi and Madagascar to be in the position in which they are in, because literally what that does is that it puts uh, the rest of the world in, actually in jeopardy, because if we don't know what is happening there, uh, it means that things could actually brew there and they could actually get transported uh, to other parts of the, of the continent, first and foremost, before other parts of the world. And by the time we find out about that and respond to it, uh, we might actually be in a pandemic phase again. So I think uh, what we really need to do is we need to be able to get the regional bodies in these areas to be able to speak with Madagascar and uh, Burundi and, of course, speak with the uh, WHO and the UN bodies so that we can get Burundi and Madagascar back in because uh, this, I think it's, it's a rather unfortunate situation and it shouldn't happen. What recommendations would you have um, should we be exploring at this time, especially uh, with a warning coming from the WHO that COVID-19 is not disappearing anytime soon? Yes, uh, indeed. I don't think COVID-19 is going away anytime soon. Uh, as I said once upon a time uh, on your show, uh, I think we still have at least another 12 months uh, to be able to better understand the pandemic, uh, to be sure that uh, there is going to be no uh, resurgence of this pandemic anytime soon. But I think uh, some of the quick things that we need to think about doing is, uh, again, I go back to Africa CDC. We need to support some of the structures that we have on the continent. Uh, we need to uh, support our research facilities. We need to strongly support the pharmaceutical industries. Uh, but again, some of the smaller things that uh, that have been recommended by WHO, in the very short and immediate term, uh, wash your hands, wear your mask, uh, don't touch your eyes, nose, and mouth. Uh, social distancing, I think social distancing is going to be a very costly thing. But it's going to be one of the most important things that we have to do at the very immediate. But I think uh, where we are today, it's going to be the new norm for uh, our normal hygiene uh, selves. But I think it's the first thing and the most important thing that we need to continue doing is respect ourselves and respect each other. All right, before we let you go, could you bring us up to speed on the latest from Uganda? What's new um, in the coronavirus fight? <laughs> Uh, Uganda, uh, they, we've made a lot of strides here. I think uh, I think one of the things that uh, I'm going to be very quick to talk about in Uganda is uh, so far in Uganda we have just a little under 250 cases, uh, 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 case, uh, 250 known cases. Uh, we've had uh, over 63 of them that have recovered. But I think one of the big news is, uh, in Uganda is the fact that we have zero death up to this point. So I think that's a phenomenal thing. Uh, His Excellency Yuri Museveni has done a phenomenal job at uh, speaking to the people, communicating to the people, ensuring that they understand the pandemic. Uh, right now, in his last address to the nation, we're going into a phased approach uh, to open up the country, to lift, down, uh, lift up the, the lockdown. So I think uh, Uganda has done a phenomenal job. Uh, I think in the region, actually, I think uh, Uganda has the highest number of testing done so far, uh, with well over 71,000 tests done to date. Uh, so I think uh, Uganda is doing a phenomenal job in the region, and uh, I just call on all the countries in the region to come look and learn. Thank you very much, Professor, for sharing your thoughts with us in the news. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good day. You too.